Welcome to Life Together Fellowship's Wednesday night worship, word, and prayer service. I love you, Lord. I worship your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King of kings. We will worship the Lamb of glory. We will worship the King. We will worship the
We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be another day in your house. I would rather be a gatekeeper at the door of the house of the Lord than to be a million days outside. Thank you, Lord. No place. I'd rather be, Lord Jesus, than to be here in your house, here in your presence, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. This is a prayer song. We can pray as we sing. Thank you, Jesus. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No place. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, oh no place I'd rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. Oh no place I'd rather be, oh no
Jesus, Lord. I want more, Lord. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not promised. I want more, Lord. I want more, 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 more of you. So pour it up. I want more, 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 more of you. So pour it up. that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Let's tell the Lord, I want more. I want more. I want more. Yeah, I'll tell him. Even when it hurts, I want more. Even when it's uncomfortable, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more, more of you. So pour it out. I want more, 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 more of you. So pour it out. I want more, I want more. So pour it up. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because when we ask, we will receive everything that's in your will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Lord Jesus. You are so good, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Where will we be without your Holy Spirit? You carry us each and every single day. Even when we feel like giving up, you're holding on to us. You're holding on to us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Mm. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures the faith are never enough then you came along thank you lord and you put me back together and every desire 
is now satisfied here in your love. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not afraid. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Jesus. Nothing is truly better than you, Lord. I am safe in your arms. I feel so much peace when I'm in your presence. Knowing that I'm in the palm of your hands, you've got everything under control. 
Nothing shakes you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom. The freedom we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I once was captive, but now I am free. How many can testify to that? Hallelujah. I would not be here if it wasn't for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You came to set the captives free. That was me. <laughs> you came to bring us liberty. My sin and my rejection met your blood and my acceptance. And now I'm alive to bring you praise. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, yeah. Every chain. Has covered every sin. Your grace empowers me to win. My pain and my oppression met your blood and my acceptance. Now I'm alive to bring you praise. Where the spirit of the Lord.
something happens when we worship the Lord, right? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is liberty in this place. Thank you, Lord, as we worship you, Jesus. You are breaking chains. You are doing miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. We believe our faith is increased in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He's here right now. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Tonight, I want to begin by reading John chapter 17 in the New American Standard translation, New American Standard Bible. If we could stand for the reading of the word this evening. I want to welcome everybody on live stream. Uh, tonight is a night of prayer where we come together in unity and ask the Lord for breakthroughs. And God is more than able. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Jesus spoke to these things. And lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to excuse me, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them. And they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you. And they believe that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on the behalf of the world but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name. The name which you, you have given me, that they may be one even as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy 
made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I'm almost done. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love which, with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Father, we thank you for your word. In your word, there is power. There is freedom. There is peace. There is rest. There is joy. There is so many things in your word, my God. And I thank you for your word that cleanses us, my God, that renews our mind, that transforms us, my Father God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I pray that in these next few minutes that you would speak to us, my God. Let us not leave here the same. We press through. We made it here on a Wednesday night, my God. We give you the glory, honor, and praise, Lord. But I pray that we don't leave here the same way we came in. We love you, Daddy, and we pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. So, here we have Jesus. Um, how do we know this was Jesus speaking? Well, in the Bible, all the letters are red. And when they say the letters are red in the Bible, what does it mean? Jesus. It's Jesus speaking. <laughs> Jesus is praying to the Father. This is before the crucifixion takes place. He's, he's getting ready to die on the cross, and he's worried about the ones that are going to stay. And his prayer is strictly that God would unite them, just as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are united. And that is so powerful because how many know there is power in unity? Amen. There's a whole lot of power in unity. When the union comes together and strikes, there's unity. There's a voice. We want to raise. We want changes. We want this. We want that. And uh, when people get united like that, people listen. And not only listen, but they see power in unity. And as we see in the word of God, we see the Trinity, right? We see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the power in their unity that they work together. They do everything um, united. And it is so powerful that that same God, that same Father, that same Jesus, that same Holy Spirit, 
is part of us. And sometimes, well, a lot of times, how, how many know about division? Division in families, divisions in churches, divisions in workplace, um, division everywhere. The, the, uh, I believe that the enemy comes to divide, devour, and conquer. And I believe that Jesus comes to unite and bring peace and joy and love. Um, so when there's unity, there's harmony. And in this world, we see a lot of disunity in many different places. And the more the enemy can keep us divided, the weaker we become. And the more the Lord, through his word and the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps us united, the stronger we become. And so his prayer is, Lord, keep them united. Could you imagine if a church was united in everything that they do? Yeah, fire is right. <laughs> it would be fire. And, but thank God that he understands us. And it's a process getting us united. Why is it a process? Because we have so many different thoughts and ideas. And um, we've grown up in our own different world, different circumstances, culture. Um, we've experienced a lot differently than the other. So when we come together in unity, it, it's kind of like we sometimes have to put ourselves to the side and think about the other. That, that's not the, world, the way the world operates. You see, Jesus was busy about glorifying the Father, not even himself. So Jesus was like, it's not about me, it's about lifting up the Father. Imagine if it was about Cheryl lifting up Melanie and helping her achieve what God has for her. And then Melanie in return will lift up Odetta and help her to accomplish all that. And that, that it would just continue to go around. It would be like um, a good disease. Is there ever a good disease? <laughs> it would be infectious. Because in, in, in unity, you kind of put yourself to the side. And you think of the other. And I believe that's what God calls us to. If we would do more of that, there would be a whole lot of more loving in the world, in the family. But the problem is that in disunity, you put yourself first. And that is sometimes prideful. I think that in unity, there's humility of placing yourself where you belong. Um, I, I believe it was Paul that said, don't think of yourself more than you should. <laughs> How many times we do that? Can I get an amen? Yes. And then God looks at us and says, bendito. <laughs> if they only knew that, and I'm not talking about a humility where everybody steps on you. It's a humility of knowing your place as a child of God. That... If God is high and lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. You put yourself in the right place. But so many times, we want to shine. And then we, we call it in the name of the word or in the name of uh, church or in the name of Jesus. And, and, and no, God knows our heart. And I think that it starts with, Lord, search my heart. You know what's there. You, you know the, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can understand? And as we see out of the 12, one heart was no good. The son of perdition. Uh, and it all came out when it needed to come out. And so when there is this unity, things come out. And when there is unity, everything falls into place. If there is unity among the church and the brethren, he will be shining. That's our purpose. 
God created us with a plan and purpose. That we would decrease and that he would increase. And if he increased, the world would be drawn to him. So why is it so hard for the church to walk in harmony and unity? We have to think about that. It's not just to say, hey, let's walk in unity. Well, I think if we think of others before we think of ourselves, it's a good start. Why do I say that? Jesus, in the midst of getting ready to be crucified, he's not even thinking about himself. He's thinking about those you gave me, Lord. That's selfless. That's like, uh, I'm not, uh, because I'm all-knowing, right? He's, I'm n- n- omniscient. I'm just waiting for you guys to help me that we're here on Fridays. <laughs> he's omniscient, all-knowing. If he's all-knowing, he already knows what he's going to go through. He already knows what's coming ahead. But he's putting that to the side. And he's saying, Father, I'm praying for them. Lord, would you help them come together in unity? Will you help them be one as you, me, and the Holy Spirit are one? I I tell you that if, if that were to happen more and more in churches, we'd be a reckon, a, a, a force to be reckoned with. Thank you. And... And that's, that's, that's what God intended for us to do. We, we should make a difference in the world. More than what the world does. But sometimes we don't. Because the fact of the matter is, we're not united. Why do you think there's so many denominations? <laughs> Come on. Why are there so many denominations? Because I got the right way. By the way, denominations are not in here. So if, you, if you're a Baptist or you're Pentecostal or uh, whatever it is that you think you are and you go to heaven, you can't pull out your Baptist card or your Catholic card or your Pentecostal card or your evangelical card because that's not going to matter. He, he's going to... Where's the blood of Jesus? <laughs> where, where, that's what matters. That's the seal that gets you in. Where, where's the blood of Jesus? And sometimes, and tell me if I'm not wrong, we hold our denominations more than we hold the truth of God. And no, I'm Baptist, so I, I know that the Baptists are right. And the other, I know I'm Pentecostal, and I know that a Pentecostal. That you may be a child of God is really the title that we should all be looking for. Amen. So if, if we're all children of God, we kind of be united like he's calling us to be. A family, yep. Yeah? Like we're learning in purpose-driven life. A family united is there for each other in the good times and the bad times. How many here, by the show of hands, got ugly family? I think we all. In many different ways. There's none perfect, none righteous, none that have it together, the Bible says. So if we sit here and say, oh, no, my family is perfect. My family got it all together, right, Evelyn? (laughs) None, none of us. There's always a little something in the mix. But that doesn't stop us from being able to get united. Because according to Colossians, the glue that keeps us all together is Christ. How do we get divided? We take Christ out. How do we get united? We put him in. When we make him the center, the focus, then we stop looking at each other. 
And so when we stop looking at each other, we can unite. But the problem is, is we take Christ, we say, okay, we love you, but right here for now. And so we handle business our way. And we think what's right. And so if we go to Proverbs, he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. And how many of us constantly want to be wise in our own eyes? And I, I, can I be a little comical and I hope I don't offend anybody? I think the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit look at each other like, I can't believe, I can't, I can't believe that they're wiser than us. <laughs> so so where, where, where were they when I put the stars in its place and the moon? Where were they when I spoke things and it came into existence? Where were they? They're so small. Where were they with, when I did what I had to do? Where were they when I rested on the seventh day? Nowhere. Because we're not smarter than God. See, if we would, if we would, if it would register here that we were created and that there's only one creator and that whatever is created is subject to the creator, we put ourselves in the right place. But sometimes we as people want to be the creator. And so in essence, we want to take the place of God. And that's where we jack up everything because the way he created everything is that if everything falls into its place, unity works out. But when we take things out of place, like we take Christ out, then it doesn't. We need to be sanctified. And a sanctification process is, is, is a daily walk. A daily time in his word, a daily dying to self, a daily allowing him to have his way in you. Then we become united because it's not about Pastor Josue, it's not about Claribel, it's not about uh, Ms. Jackson, it's about Christ. The, The joy for me is that I wouldn't even be remembered Or that my name wouldn't even go nowhere. But if I represent Christ and Christ be lifted up, then I've taken my place. I've taken my place. And so when I see in a time getting close to his death and he's crying out to the Father, Lord, help them to be united. Help them to be one. I... Register in my mind that that's important to him. And if that's important to him as disciples of Christ, that needs to be important to me. So we should put more emphasis on being united. I believe that the more the word of God comes into us and the more the word of God comes into Ms. Jackson the more it makes us one. Because now we're not operating under what Ms. Jackson feels, thinks, or her culture, or how she grew up. We're we're focusing on what's truth. And it says the truth will sanctify us. That's powerful right there. (laughs) So we should be swallowing this word because the more truth we have, The more united I can be with Pastor Josue because he's doing the same thing. So it doesn't matter your culture. doesn't matter what you feel, how you grew up, what you've experienced. Because that word brings us together. So imagine a church full of the word and praying. Holy Ghost fire. You see, when, when, when those... Disciples came together in Pentecostal experience. Their only focus was God when the Holy Spirit came down. Anybody remember how many of them? Very good. 
120. 120 united because if they were divided at that moment, there's no way the Holy Spirit could descend upon them. They were there united in one mind, one spirit, one purpose. They obeyed. Go and wait. How many of us can't even wait till this service is over? They're like, oh, I haven't eaten yet. And pastor, you got a good word and that blessed me. But right now I'm thinking about that steak sandwich that's waiting for me. They waited patiently and they sought the Lord. And so when, when we walk according to this word in obedience to what he tells us to do, forget it. There's a unity that can't be broken. What does Ecclesiastics say? A court of cannot be broken. Could you imagine if we were that united? Nothing. When, when, when division comes in, no, no. You will not talk about my sister Melanie. She's my sister in Christ. Yes, she's not perfect, but she's my sister in Christ. And I will not let you or anyone else bring division among our brethren. Amen. That's staying united. That doesn't mean she's perfect. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. That means Christ is the glue that keeps us together. And if Christ is the glue that keeps us together, that cord of three strands will not be broken. The problem is, is when we take Christ out, is that's when division comes. So, my prayer tonight is that the church would be more united. Amen. And not united to get their own desires accomplished, but united in letting Christ rule and reign. And that his truth would enter our minds and transform our hearts so that we can become all that he has called us, planned us, created us to be. He didn't just say, here's Josue. No, he took his time with Josue. Who his mother was going to be, who his uh, father was going to be, uh, that he was going to be. Sabana uh, Puerto Rico? No? De donde Puerto Rico? Rio Prieda, Puerto Rico. De los Montes de Rio Piedra, that he was going to get a Clarabel in his life, that a Clarissa was going to be born to them. That, that didn't just happen, guys. God put it all together. And who's keeping them together? God. And if he wasn't, and if he wasn't in the middle, God knows where they'd be. <laughs> he, said, he said, jacked up. <laughs> but imagine, a lot of us, if Christ wasn't in our lives, our home be jacked up. Because we've been hit with some horrific stuff, tragedy, storms in our lives that, that have kind of flipped our world around. But then comes Christ and embraces us and covers us and builds us up. And I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe that the best is yet to come. That we're not who we used to be. That he's still at work in us now. And the best is yet to come. Because the more he works in us, the more united we become. And God is going to do some mighty and powerful things. So, will you help me pray? We see what this unity does in Russia, Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, all around the world. But if we pray for unity and we pray for Christ to come in the center... Things can change. Amen? Amen. Help me.